got to this house uh, which is now named Isla Bonita when we first uh, arrived here uh, the locals called it Casa de Mierda house of shit it had been abandoned for 10 years and it was known as a place where people go to do drugs uh, drink beer uh, graffiti burn fires uh, it was full of trash everywhere, it was full of uh, feces, uh, human shit. We ended up in Agalas because we were cycle touring, we were uh, tent camping. We decided that um, our strategy for camping was when we would come to town, we would come to the end of town, usually camp in the bushes on the outskirts of town. When we got to the edge of town, instead of there being bushes, there was this big beautiful abandoned house and we decided that uh, we would sleep here uh, because there was a storm however there was uh, two people living in it uh, we simply asked if it was okay if we could put up our tent or and they said no problem but we were still outside so the next day it was still stormy we asked if it would be okay if we cleaned out one room and just uh, put our tent inside so we'd be outside of the weather cleaned a room for ourselves uh, to, to sleep in. Of course in the end we ended up cleaning the whole house because we realized uh, after being here for a week that this house was amazing and beautiful. That the coastline is beautiful. We decided that uh, maybe it would be a fun adventure to sort of clean this house and and uh, make a nice place to spend the winter. That was the idea. So for us we saw the potential underneath all the trash we saw all the beauty and um, it just sort of made sense we didn't think about opening a collective or starting a movement or anything. We just thought that it would be nice for the city of Aguilas and just as a nice thing to do to just make it look nice, make it look clean. And so we started by cleaning all the trash in the outside. Uh, people walk around the beach and when they walk down the beach they would, they would see us cleaning and they would, they would be interested. And uh, the next thing you know, people started giving us donations for, for cleaning. And uh, it made us feel like maybe we were doing something good. Maybe we were doing something special. However, what happened was other cycle tourists started passing through and asking if they could help with the project. So, of course, we let other people come and, and help with the project. And the next thing you knew, we had people living in other rooms that they had cleaned out themselves. And more people arrived and they started cleaning out rooms that they could stay for themselves. Basically just trying to make something beautiful out of something that had been left behind and had been left for trash. My name is Seth Campanella. I am from America. Uh, specifically Oregon, and I'm 13. Well, I have been traveling since I was seven, and I really like traveling because of all the people I meet and the different cultures I get to see and the history of Europe instead of just being stuck in America because 
it's it's fun. It's a new way of life, and it's awesome traveling. I really like it. Our reputation is, in town is the hippie house, and uh, we don't really identify as that. We identify as an artist collective, and that's what we are trying to promote is that we are an artist collective and not just a bunch of hippies. <laughs> We invited everyone. We invited everyone that came and it just started to snowball. People started to talk, oh yeah, there's this abandoned house, it's a little community. During the summertime, we probably had an average of 15 to 20 people every day. Um, so in the summertime, it got really busy. I think at the maximum capacity, we had about 25 people staying here in their tents, in the house, all over the grounds. So we came up with a system. Instead of everyone buying individual food, and uh, we could buy enough to make one big meal for everybody, and we, we realized quickly that that was the most efficient way to cook, the most efficient way to feed everybody. Of course, it's an abandoned house, it doesn't cost anything for anyone to live here. Anyone who wants to stay pays 10 euros a week, and which is maybe 1 euro 20 something a, a day. And for that 1 euro 20, uh, you get your breakfast and you get your dinner and usually lunch. And that caught on quickly because everybody who came pretty much realized that it's impossible to eat for a euro 20 every day, um, breakfast and dinner. So it was basically just the, the most simple system we could, we could come up with for feeding everybody. Uh, living in an abandoned house does pose some challenges. Uh, obviously the most difficult thing would be uh, lack of running water. Not having running water poses some problems, but we've managed to get through it by building sinks um, that we can use beach water and we can use um, the city water. All your life you've been working, always in a hurry. See, don't know. What are we going to do? Go fill water. Yes. <laughs> what if I told you? Yeah. You don't got to do nothing. And all of your dreams, they come true. Stop your stop your cussing, yeah, don't keep doing nothing, nothing, it hurts so Hello, high. welcome to the petrol station. Today we're going to get water. And for Isla Benita we need about three to five of these jugs of water per day to survive at least. So this is enough water for us for about a week, maybe uh, five to seven days. Uh, we have to come to the petrol station and pay two euros because uh, we don't have water uh, access at our house. And um, in order to get water, there's a spigot here and we simply uh, take the jugs, fill them up with water and uh, take them back home. That's, that's all there is to it. It's used for cooking. Uh, it's used for cleaning of the dishes. Uh, it can be used for taking a shower. Uh, it's used to feed the uh, animals water. So, you know, we can also drink the water if you boil it, or you could just drink it as it is. Uh, good luck with that. But it's, you know, it's enough water for the week right here. Keep on giving everything you got. Keep on living and you'll get back.
decided that we were going to be an intentional community, um, we decided that um, the, the purest form of what we were was artists. And basically, to define our community, we decided to name ourselves an artist collective. But we also found that uh, it promoted a lot of positive energy with, with everybody in the community. Um, we all watched each other work and we all learned from each other. We all inspired each other. As we became more of a community, we needed systems in place to, uh, to make it function properly. My goal here has always been that Isla Bonita has no central leadership, that everything is collectively decided and uh, collectively run. The concept is the same as, as it has been since day one. The concept is a creative place, a place where people can come to create. Our systems are, are very simple and very compassion-based. It's essentially um, to be respectful of everyone, to work on creative projects, um, both for your own personal projects and for projects around the house, for beautification of the house. If someone comes to Isla Bonita and they propose a project, we are usually capable of helping facilitate whatever project it is that they want to do. If they need some sort of funding for materials, people are free to, to work on their projects and people have what the materials they need, the tools they need. Uh, obviously in one year we haven't collected a lot of resources uh, as far as tools and donations go. Um, we're always looking for people to contribute materials and to contribute tools for the sake of um, artists being able to come and work on whatever it is that they want to work on. You know, basically, once we realized that what we're doing is renovating this house, we were always searching for people with uh, skills, uh, painting skills and construction skills and uh, building skills. And when those people would come, it was amazing what, what we would get done. Ready? One, two, one, two, three. Well, we moved like cage tigers. How could we miss someone? 
the market is uh, an important relationship that we have with the city of Aguilas. I play at the market every weekend, uh, usually with my friend Chris, sometimes with uh, Gabriele, uh, sometimes with other musicians. Um, we have uh, earned a reputation as the musicians of the market, which I'm really proud of um, because we've, we've integrated into the local culture. In trade, we bring home all of the damaged uh, fruits and vegetables from the market, a good portion of them. And the fruits and vegetables uh, supplement our meals for the week. So it's really great because people that travel through uh, have the opportunity to eat a lot of fresh vegetables and a lot of fresh fruits, which I think is really good for poor people traveling, people traveling on a budget. It's nice to have access to a lot of fresh vegetables and fruits. And it's also nice that uh, it's an exchange. It's an exchange between the vendors in the market and the artists of Isla Bonita. We are really happy and really proud of, of our relationship at, at the market and the friends that we've made at the market. Uh, we exchange music with them, we, we play together, we sing together, we laugh together, and uh, in the end we come home with a car full of uh, fruits and vegetables and we're able to supplement our meals all week long. Well, one of the things that's always been important to us at Isla Bonita is um, local involvement, involving the local community. We've tried different ways. In the summertime, we do a pizza party on Saturday nights, and that was a, a minor success. And then recently, we've tried something new, which was happy hour on Friday nights, which is a much bigger success. Um, no surprise that uh, alcohol brings people out. We do a Friday night happy hour from 5 to 7 and we have an open mic jam. Anyone's welcome to come and bring an instrument. We have instruments available for here for people to play. It doesn't have to be music, it can be poetry, it can be spoken word, it can be performance, but it's just a way that people can interact with us and uh, maybe get over this uh, preconception that, that we're hippies or we're outsiders. Um, it's a way for people to come and enjoy Isla Bonita, have a drink, uh, play some music, listen to some music, dance. Um, it's been a really positive situation uh, for us and also I think for the community. And we do everything by donation, so we don't charge for happy hour. We don't charge for drinks. We just ask that people leave a donation if they're happy. We run the happy hour donations as a goal-oriented economy, so we had happy hour donations all went towards our lighting system and now our lighting system is just about ready to go. We take care of a stray dog, and she has a hip problem, so now our donations are going towards uh, the medication she needs for her hip. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a positive way that people can come over, they can have a drink, they can socialize, and their donations, they know what their donation goes towards, which is good for us because people are happy to, to leave a donation, knowing it goes for something good. It's a nice way that we can share. We can share what we do and, and the community can share what they do and feel like um, we can give something back um, through drinks and music and, and nice times and, and uh, doing these nice creative projects for the house that ultimately 
is to the benefit of Aguilas. <laughs> I live in Isla Bonita simply because I've always loved the idea of getting out of the economic system and living for free. Uh, I've always thought it was a good goal to try to live with as little money as possible, to live outside of the economy, to live outside of the banking system. We just got lucky enough to find a beautiful house on the coast of Spain. It was abandoned. When we talked to the city, they had no problems with us. So it seemed like uh, my personal goal of, of living for free was easily fulfilled. Of course, it took a lot of work, but in the end, uh, that's, that's ultimately what we were hoping to do, is to try to live for free, and we've done a pretty good job of it. There's a lot of things I love about Isla Bonita. Uh, one, it's been really amazing to see a community grow where there was none. Uh, it's really amazing to see people come together and work together on a project like this simply because they want to. For me, it's, uh, it's a really beautiful thing when someone comes and, and they're inspired. That's exactly what I was hoping when we decided to be a creative space, is that people would come here and simply because it was free and they had the time and space, they could do whatever they want and they could work on whatever project they want as abstract as they want because there's no there's no reason, there's no market necessarily for it. It's just do for the sake of doing. And so when people come and do, it, it's amazing. It's truly a, an amazing thing uh, as an artist to see other artists uh, inspired. Um, it just feeds, it feeds everybody. It feeds the entire community. My wish for the future of Isla Bonita would be that it could sustain itself as a project, as a place to host uh, artists and travelers, that the systems are in place for all everything that needs to happen, for water, for food, for waste, um, for toilet, and that all of the systems run, it, run themselves. Ultimately, I was always hoping that uh, we could uh, do gardens and we could eat sustainably off Isla Bonita too. That seems a little long term, but you never know. I just hope that uh, it can sustain itself and it and it can it can run for as long as it can without without any concepts of uh, leadership or control or power. It's a free space for for everyone, and uh, it's a it's a place that people know they can come to work on projects, to live on the coast of Spain for as long as they like. That the system runs itself. Ultimately, I've always dreamed that it would be a place that I could come back to in a year or in two years or in five years and see all the progress of all the artists that have come through and see all the new artwork and 
sculpture and whatever happens to be here? Well, the way that we recruit people or they are invited here is nowadays we do it through Facebook and basically you can follow our homepage at Isla Bonita Collective and um, basically you just email us or message us that you want to come and join our what we're doing and what we're creating and through that we can set up dates and times and have an open space for you. What I hope to see in this place when we leave and hopefully when we come back is that it's been more beautiful and not just abandoned because I feel like we put our heart and soul into this place for a year and I hope it just continues to be um, made into a collective and stays the way that we hope it will be. What we are looking for is people with heart, people that want to contribute, that want to stay here for long term, to look over this place and watch it grow and watch it develop into Isla Bonita, which translates to beautiful island. Like I said, we have activities. Friday we have happy hour open to the public and to anyone that wants to come. In the summer we have pizza parties every Saturday and our homemade pizza oven. Anyone that just wants to contribute, bring a donation, anything. Uh, Facebook you could follow and we have donations for lights, LED lights. We are putting a uh, putting together a lighting system. Um, any donations are welcome and we just hope and wish that this place turns for the best and continues to grow. Seguir la fe que me hace tan feliz Darle un efecto a la vida diferente